Now I invite Mr. Daniele Livon, General Director for Programming, Planning, Coordination and Funding of Higher Education Institutions, and I invite him to uh, share with us uh, the uh, Ministry's uh, perspective. Thank you. I will try to keep uh, my presentation and my conclusions uh, as brief as possible. And uh, I found uh, the presentation of the Alma Laurea survey results uh, very interesting. Every time that uh, a representative of the ministry participates in this event, um, it is here to witness uh, uh, positive outcomes and to come home with uh, useful insights in order to um, press ahead and uh, go ahead with uh, the uh, reform policies. I've um, taken stock of uh, the content uh, that uh, emerged uh, from the various sessions and roundtables, and I've uh, uh, taken some notes, and uh, I would like to dwell on uh, five uh, uh, aspects which emerged, and then uh, what can uh, the university do uh, to address all these needs? Uh, Professor Alconte started uh, his presentation with the word technology, future-oriented technology. I often wonder whether or not the technology has already uh, brought about huge transformations uh, in our um, labor market. It uh, changed uh, the way we work uh, in a very uh, significant place. Uh, instead of uh, freeing up uh, space uh, and time, it has made some individuals more productive, whereas uh, it has made other individuals much less uh, productive because they lacked uh, the competencies uh, to develop this technology and also um, expanded and uh, um, expanded the gap between these two categories of people and this poses an important uh, issue that is how best to organize uh, labor uh, in view of all these uh, technological changes we should all reflect on this if we have the necessary skills in this new organization then uh, we can uh, uh, get to positive outcomes, otherwise uh, we will find it difficult to find our place. Um, labor relations are important, but in the same way the logistics aspects uh, of a work organization are important. Uh, this distinction, this uh, possibility uh, to work uh, remotely from remote places may come in handy at all uh, levels, may uh, be one of the possible solutions and options. Uh, and this is an open debate, and uh, I invite everybody to reflect on this. There are some huge challenges uh, in this country. We have uh, concentrated on the main challenges that Italy is uh, addressing now, and they have to do with uh, uh, university graduates and with uh, businesses. So we have to uh, deal with the issue of graduates under employment, and this uh, goes hand in hand with the need uh, to increase the number of graduates, despite the huge uh, steps forward of the last uh, uh, few years. Uh, uh, so consider uh, the level of 10 years uh, ago, then increase uh, the employability of graduates and uh, um, increase the competitiveness of Italian businesses. These are four qualifying aspects. They are all equally important, and they may not uh, uh, go to the same direct in the same direction. Why this? Because uh, there is another missing link uh, in our reasoning, and this is the um, territory. Um, specific element. There is a Union Camere report which uh, uh, contains uh, some paradox, uh, some paradox, uh, paradoxical data. There are some uh, areas in the country which are typically in the north uh, that attract uh, more students. There is a migration from the south to the north of uh, students and uh, graduates. At the national level, the areas where 
we have the highest concentration of uh, unsatisfied, unmet uh, labor demand uh, are the northern regions, uh, the same regions where we have the highest employment rate. These are the same regions where we have the highest rate of uh, unmet demand. This means that there are some southern uh, regions where the employment rate is low and the uh, rate of unmet demand is uh, also low. These are regions that uh, could have uh, huge potentials but are doing nothing. Um, students about uh, to get a degree may have some uh, job opportunities but uh, may have even more uh, potential opportunities uh, if the necessary changes were made. So universities have an important role to play in this respect. And uh, as I see the situation today on these four aspects, um, training demand, uh, um, labor offer and supply, labor supply and demand, um, universities have always, always concentrated uh, on uh, education provision, training provision. And in a country such as ours, where graduates um, tend to go and work abroad, and uh, they grow in a um, territory which has no international vocation. So this means uh, that there are many uh, businesses, usually small-sized businesses, which are not able to express uh, their work offerings. And they find it difficult to uh, determine what type of graduate is necessary um, to compete uh, uh, in foreign uh, markets. I was contacted uh, some uh, days ago by a company uh, that was uh, searching for uh, specialists uh, in uh, uh, refurbishment and restoration of uh, works of art. Uh, and I've put uh, this small business in contact with some uh, leading institutions uh, in uh, Italy that engage in these uh, studies, that provided these uh, studies, and I've helped uh, four year students uh, to find a job. And uh, I think that uh, uh, the academic world uh, should uh, not just be focused on uh, educational provision. They should uh, focus on uh, um, education demand and should engage more in identifying uh, uh, the match between uh, uh, labor demand and supply. This time and this space, the gap uh, between uh, the academic world and the business world, uh, small um, businesses will find it hard to shorten this gap. So universities uh, should take the lion's share in doing this in order to shorten uh, this uh, gap uh, and bridge this gap. This is an important aspect. This is an important takeaway from this uh, pre presentation, from this conference. Uh, from uh, guidance to work placement. This is a priority, and it's here that uh, we can provide added value. The placement models have to be uh, differentiated uh, based on uh, the territorial requirements. Uh, placement in the Milan Polytechnic will require different um, modalities than placement uh, um, undertaken by other universities uh, placed in other uh, regions uh, and with different requirements. Uh, very So thank you for your contribution. Um, Ms. I would like to thank uh, um, Daniele Livon for allowing me to indicate uh, that AMPAL engaged uh, in a project uh, to uh, strengthen uh, placement uh, uh, services. So providing uh, uh, guidance not only at the beginning of the studies, 
but also at the end uh, with a view to helping uh, graduates uh, to be placed on the uh, labor market. And uh, I see some uh, uh, positive changes. Uh, businesses are recognizing the value of an efficient uh, placement service. Here we are. We can now draw the conclusions. And uh, I hand over to Marco Mancini, uh, head of department for higher education and uh, research uh, of the Ministry for uh, University and Research. Good evening, everybody. I have the hard task of drawing conclusions. First of all, just a personal, private uh, observation. We've heard a lot about soft skills and also about competencies, skills, uh, more adequate degree courses for soft skills. I'm the clear example of uh, soft skills because I have a degree in humanities and I am the classical example of uh, quite eccentric uh, competencies as compared to what uh, may be technically required in some sectors. My task is to draw conclusions. It's a very challenging task. First of all, we should thank Alma Lauria and also CRUI, the Conference of Rectors, for their contribution to this meeting, which was preceded yesterday by a more technical meeting of the consortium. I'd like to thank the University of Parma for hosting us. I was the president of CRUI, and I had never been to Parma in spite of this. It's a very nice place. Thanks very much to our colleagues in Parma for their contribution as well. My conclusions are that today we've had two crucial points. We've considered two crucial points. First of all, the 19th report by Alma Laurea and the conference, which is perfectly in line with the outcomes of the report. Well, the report has highlighted lots of important facts. Using my soft skills, I've tried to summarize the soft skills in a few sentences. I'm also a linguist, so this worsens the scenario. I think the conclusion we can draw is improve further and be able to anticipate. Improving and anticipating were key words uh, today. Well, the Alma Lauria report, as Minister Fedeli pointed out, shows that there is a feeble recovery from a period that was rather dark and uh, difficult uh, for our country and the university system as a whole. Recovery is reflected in numbers. Uh, of course, employment is catching up, but there has always there has also been a um, revival uh, of the effectiveness and uh, reliability of the universities. Uh, and the university system. This has clearly emerged from today's figures. And then um, in the following uh, presentations after the report, we have um, listened to the major contributions of our foreign colleagues, uh, including our Chinese colleagues who pointed out that to face the near future challenges, we need to be able to anticipate them. We have to be flexible enough to see which new problems come up, how to deal with them, and how to develop 
strategic abilities to cope with these problems, not just within the university world, but also within the research world. I'm referring to public research, which is supported and monitored by our ministry. We are doing something already. I don't want to speak as a bureaucrat from the ministry now. I'd like to remind you of one thing we've been focusing on. We've talked about Industry 4.0. We have changed the way of using our resources with a view to Industry 4.0. We've done this within the National Research Plan. We've done this for doctoral degrees of in innovative disciplines. And we've done this also in the allocation of funds to the Departments of Excellence. Please don't forget that within the topics that will be given priority by the Committee for Excellence Departments, we also have the typical topics of Industry 4.0. This was done on purpose um, in agreement with um, the Minister, and we have made our contribution to Industry 4.0. Of course, then everything is up to the colleagues that will have to submit the projects. What really impressed me in the last round table was the point raised by Mr. Illy, who pointed out how important it is to have cross-sectional integration of skills. I think it's important to highlight this. All too often, the university system was strongly criticized and accused of being too generic. Sometimes the skills within a degree course are fragmented, distributed, too general. Think of um, the distribution of the topics, basic, uh, more specialized, etc. But the skills and the map of skills offered by our degree courses, both in two-year degree courses and three-year degree courses, well, if you think of these skills, there is an exciting feature. They combine knowledge, of course, relative knowledge, but it's an interesting integration of knowledge. In the old times, in the old uh, rigid uh, schemes uh, in uh, a school of humanities, uh, you could not have any course in economics. The situation has changed a lot at the present time, and this is true for many degree courses. This is highly qualifying. And also the school of law, you know, I'm usually thinking of uh, how my architecture, or how the architecture of uh, my university was. Uh, on the one hand, you know, the law, the school of law, and on the other hand, the school of humanities um, with a fountain in between. There was a clear-cut separation between the two, while there is more intermingling today. We need to further develop this approach, also because this, is, this clearly emerges from the Alma Laurea surveys. And talking about Alma Laurea, 
We've heard about first level, second level degree courses. We've talked about internationalization. For those of you who do not know the activities of Alma Loria, let me stress that they are working also at doctoral degrees now. I think it would be important to understand how the market is reacting in this respect. We have seen from these surveys and we've seen from Professor Green's talk that there is a deep gap between what is happening in the north and south. I was impressed by his use of Anglo-Nordic. So there's a gap between the north and the south. There is a sort of under assessment of the skills provided by university. I think we have to carry out similar analysis also in the doctoral degrees to understand how to better help those attending these courses to establish a better relationship with the labor market. The ministry is doing this, the conference of rectors too. I think we have to respond to this and will be very interested in um, reading the early results on the of the Alma Laurea survey on uh, doctoral students and graduates. Um, we have received a lot of insights today. I'd like to thank all of you, not just for being speakers here, but also for attending. Thank you.